mindful eating is the practice of bringing awareness to what we eat, what we feed the body, and when we feed the body. Before I start, I want to ask you all a question. What did you eat yesterday for lunch? I sense a bit of struggle. That's okay. Even though it was a recent event, we struggle to remember it. Now why is that? Why is it that such an important thing what we feed the body? And so recent, we forget. And even if you remember the meals, you've probably forgotten the things you had on the side. Or maybe uh, what you had in between the meals, the snacks. And they are all important, they're all food. So the cause of it is habitual eating. Eating habits. And habits naturally form to save us energy. They say, what did our guy eat a thousand times before? Well, every day he has, he has breakfast in the morning and he has eggs. So let's do that today, why not, right? Or maybe he has some sweets in the afternoon, we're gonna do the same thing. So it doesn't consult the conscious mind, it just makes a decision. So we basically sleepwalk through our decisions and what we eat. And that is very dangerous. If you have destructive eating habits, that could be harming you and it will be compounding in the long run and you are even unaware of it. So you don't know it's happening. That's where it's very dangerous. So because of that, I think it's worth to invest the time and see how these eating habits were formed so we can tweak it for the better. There are three factors, three main factors to forming our eating habits. The first one is the diet we adopted early on. What we were fed as a child in our family. What food choices our parents made for us. What food was available in the household. So if you are very, uh, you had a lot of veggies in childhood, then it's probably that when you grow up, you have a more tendency to seek out for veggies and enjoy them. So the taste is normalized for you because you've had them early on and you've seen your parents that you look up to and you see that they're eating, your siblings are eating, so you copy them just like every other behavior and it is added to your eating habits. The second one, the diet of close associates. So later on when we grow older, we have co-workers, we have best friends where we spend a lot of time with. They are the second factor that affect our eating habits. Why? Because we see what they're eating and they're our friends, so we copy a lot of things, why not eat it? And they also offer us the food they're eating. So we go to their house, what food is available there, what, what food are they eating, is it alcohol, is it, um, it could be protein, it could be, do we have always have chips and unhealthy snacks while eating television? So other activities that combine with the snacks you have on the side. So we should have that in mind as well. The friends that we have also affect our eating habits. And the third one is exposure to packaging and media. Media is everywhere these days. And even if you like somehow quit all social media, we still have packaging. So if you go grocery shopping, there is, okay. So there is all this shiny seductive packages uh, with colorful visuals that try to entice you and say like buy me, especially if you're a child I remember I would see these cereal boxes and they, they were so interesting I would want to try each and every one of them so I wouldn't think about the nutritional value of it I would just see the picture, see the guy and uh, I would think like this is, this is worth trying and I was unaware of the key ingredients it contained also, we have celebrity endorsements, people that uh, we admire, they, they advertise for these big corporates, these big brands, and we think that because they approve of it, we should try it and eat it. So it's very dangerous, these three factors. And if you think of it, almost none of these three factors are in our control. So they were determined for us. You can't quit going to the grocery shop. You can't like quit all media or you can't choose which family you're born in so that was a deck of cards already given to us our eating habits but it doesn't have to stay like that we can change it it doesn't have to stay to the factory settings 
We, but the first step to change is awareness. We have to first know what the eating habits are, and then we can think and start judging and say, okay, I want to change it for the better. This part, I want to substitute it, or uh, I think this has more nutritional value. But if we're unaware and we're just going frivolously through life and eating whatever we usually ate, well, you shouldn't expect a good result. Bringing awareness to what we eat can be as simple as asking this question. What are the key ingredients of this food? When you're grocery shopping, you want to buy something, just ask that question. You don't need to write it down or count anything, count calories or journal, none of that. Just ask very simply, what are the key ingredients of this? Before accepting food from someone, what are the key ingredients? And if you can't identify the key ingredients, it's probably too processed. And we all know what experts have to say about processed food. Not really good. So an example would be, the sh I, I had, when I go grocery shopping, I have something I call the sugar aisle. So before I would call it like Snickers, Twizzlers, I would see chocolate bars, and then I granola bars. But now I just simplify it. I say all of this, the, the main common ingredient they have is sugar. It doesn't have much nutritional value, so I call it the sugar aisle. I still go through it, maybe I still even buy a few things, but I know, I am aware that it has sugar. And that's what I'm getting out of. So the first step was awareness. But then, if you really want to step up your game and uh, make a change, we can follow up that question with another one. What are healthier substitutes? So, before I start asking the first question, I thought I was a healthy eater. Then I said, okay, you know what, I'm going to try and ask uh, what are the key ingredients before I eat anything. And I realized that I was a healthy eater. But there were still some improvements that I could make. So I realized that I was having a chocolate almost every day in the evening. And I would have it to get out of that afternoon slump and so I could get some work done. And I only realized it when I was started asking that question. I would grab the sugar, and I would grab the chocolate bar, and then I would ask myself, what are the key ingredients? Sugar, fat, I would look at the back, and then I would see like oh, a lot of sugar. So, no judgment, but I, at least I know it's sugar. And I would say, okay, I want to take it, I, I want it, it's delicious, no judgment, okay, go forward. Next thing, sugar, next thing, sugar, and then again, and then again. And eventually I grew tired of it. I said, okay, so now that I know I'm making a mistake, now I can move forward and make a change. So I asked, what are healthier substitutes? And then I thought, like, what do we have that still has sugar so I can get out of that afternoon slump? So I opened the refrigerator and I saw, we have grapes. I can try that. I tried it, I liked it. Now, that's just an example. It's not, it doesn't mean that we should always substitute grapes for uh, chocolate. As our friend uh, Andrew said, uh, fruits are just like uh, candies. And the healthy version. Well, I, I think that that's what I did, but, and that was both being an example, but we can all make subtle improvements in our, in the food that we choose to have, and those subtle improvements in the long run actually pay off. So instead of compounding in the negative direction, it compounds in the positive direction. And for such an important thing, what you feed the body, the physical input in the body, which affects, definitely affects the output, which is our thoughts, which is our decisions. It's disingenuous to sleepwalk through. So, next time, I would like to know, when I ask myself the question, what did I eat yesterday, I would like to list it out, because it's very recent, and I've asked the question, so because I made a conscious decision to eat that food or fruit, I will remember it, and I will know why I did it, and why I didn't substitute with something healthy. Thank you for listening. Um, as we're living in a world now where we're just living passive lives, compared to in the previous time, where everything's a screen, I sound so redundant, a screen in front of us, I think we also become very complacent about what we do in our diet and our, and our sleep, as Victoria was talking about. Exactly. So, um, that's, that's amazing. What are some things that you found have affected you when you were mentioning how 
when you take in certain foods, it affects your thoughts. What has they positively affected you and what is negative? I understand you mentioned grapes instead of chocolate, for example, yeah. but I'm, I'm wondering what have you noticed? One more example myself, I found if I eat white rice, mm -hmm. an hour later I'm fidgety and short-tempered, whereas yeah. like my other food, it doesn't affect me at all. So mm -hmm. what have you found? So two examples just came to my mind when you asked the question. First one is sushi. So I love sushi. Ooh, sushi yes. I love sushi. But I was unaware of why I'm choosing sushi just because I liked it. And then I realized when I became mindful of what I'm eating, I realized that every time I have sushi in, for lunch, in the evening, I would feel the chills. I would feel chills. that I am not dominant over my uh, position. And I felt like I, my hands were cold. And th that's really not good. Whenever you want to uh, do a handshake, your hands are cold. And then it's, it's, it's not good in the business world. So I, w because I was aware that I was eating sushi, then I could link it to it and I limited the amount of sushi that I ate. And another example would be caffeine. So it, it adds to the stress. And uh, if a person habitually drinks caffeine in the morning just because that's the way their family did it or the way they usually do it, and they have, always have stress, they are unaware that it's because of the caffeine, unless they make some uh, experiments and think about it and are aware that, oh, I'm having caffeine, let me, let me try not to have caffeine and then see what works. That is mindful. Thank you. Very mindful eating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well okay. I wish we had more time. Maybe yeah. we could talk after. Okay. So we're coming to a close now. I just want to thank issue a thanks to all the children. Your speeches were great. Not only children, uh, young adults as well. You've shown that scientific practice and learning has uh, an, ama an amazing effect on, uh, on uh, science scientific and learning has an amazing effect on our lives. Um, being mindful, as, as uh, Sina had just mentioned, um, having a proper regimen of our management, of our, sorry, our um, health management. So, um, should you dare to explore, you can grow and your scientific leadership will continue to improve young ones as well as the rest of us. Thank you. 我们也期待科学的彩虹一定会越来越壮丽 During the children's speeches, we also saw that every child is a little teacher of health management science. When health management science enters the lives of every family, children will have the, children will have the initiative to lead the science of health and nutrition, and the scientific rainbow we expect will become more and more magnificent. Dear friends and family, the Life Cycle Wellness Management Competition for 2024 has now come to a conclusion. For the record, we'll be hosting the, the award ceremony on December the 18th, and we're going to announce the winners and present the awards on that day. 好的,我们亲爱的观众朋友们,2024年生命全周期健康管理大赛已经结束了。时间我们会另行通知各位家长和参赛选手们ACPN will continue to adhere to the scientific practice of the community to help children become leaders in health management, creating and leading the future. 观众朋友们,我们将继续关注ACPN的健康营养科学的系列活动,您可以搜索ACPN的公众号在屏幕下方扫二维码,我们还有更多的健康营养的专业活动等着您。we invite friends and family among the audience today, please, con to please continue their attention to ACPN's health and nutrition science activities. 
You can search for the official ACPN account and scan the QR code at the bottom of the screen. We have more professional health and nutrition activities waiting for you. See you next year. Thank you. Thank you.